You have to get home. You have to come home now. She's terrified. I was 15 minutes away. Only 15 minutes, but every second I sped home felt like an eternity. I'd been sitting at my desk reading the news from the past day when my phone rang. Why is my wife phoning me now, this late? Christopher, you have to get home. Jessica has seen someone. She's seen someone out back. There's something outside the back door. Calm down, Rachel. What exactly happened? Don't tell me to calm down. She's petrified. I'm petrified. She's under the cover screaming that he looked at her. He saw her and he's coming for her. Christopher, she said he had no face. I felt something that I had not felt since I was a child. A chill ran right to my core. I was shaking. I could tell by my wife's voice that this was real. She never called me Christopher, Chris or Chrissy, but never Christopher. My daughter was five, she was smart and bold and never scared of anything. I could hear her muted voice in the background crying and repeating over and over, He's coming, mummy. He has no face and he's coming, mummy. I ran from my desk as fast as I could, abandoning everything but my keys while my co-workers looked on, wondering what the hell had just happened. My boss was walking in the office door as he rushed past. Move! I screamed at him, knocking him to the floor. Where's my phone? I've lost it in this panic. It could be in the car, in the office, or the car park, but there's no time to stop and look. The house is secure. The doors are locked. They should be safe. No one could get in, right? But I have to get home. The house. There it is. The lights are all on and it all looks quiet. I rush from the car and burst through the front door and into the room. My wife is sitting on the bed stroking Jessica under the covers. She won't come out. I've never seen her like this before. She must have seen someone, Christopher. You have to go out. I grabbed my torch and a crowbar from the toolbox. If there was someone there, I didn't want to hurt them, but I did want to scare them away. I walked into the kitchen and switched the light off. I walked into the kitchen and switched the light off, unlocked the door and walked out to the garden. I sweeped the torch round past the shed across the fence and down to the gate. Nothing. I looked in the mud near the door and there were no footprints. It was wet. If someone had been at the door, they must have left footprints. I turned back to the house where my wife and Jessica look on. It's all clear, honey. There's nobody. The light of the torch shines upon them, their faces hollow and bare.